It's Toby from Heavyweight MMA. Today with professional MMA fighter and rising star, Don Marfan from Team Compton Training Center. How are you, bro? Yeah, I'm feeling good, bro. Feeling good. Man, I'm um, just thinking Team Compton. The song comes in on my head straight out of Compton from NWA. Does anyone ever play that? Yeah, 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 for sure. We've, uh, we've talked about it um, that uh, now that we're starting to get quite a few people on the same card, we might, um, we might have to all have a team walkout song and then straight out of Compton's definitely uh, popped off as a, a team walkout song that we could walk it's out the best, to. Yeah. Bro. It's awesome. I actually have a, I have a playlist I play every day uh, for training in when we do kickboxing and uh, that's one of the tracks on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, cool. Hey, bro. So sometimes people say that a loss can be beneficial for a fighter, bro. It seems the case for you, man. That loss that you had to Quill and Sal kid, killed seemed to have like, lit a fire under you, bro. Uh, you mentioned that you've got more motivation, training hard, chasing your goals, man. Is that fair to say? Yeah, 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 without a doubt. Um, I was so sure before the loss that I was training as hard as physically possible, but I guess I was wrong uh, because I definitely unlocked a new gear. Like I went from training three times a day to, to four times a day, um, just constantly obsessing, like uh, constantly – um, finding time to like go go study uh, on my laptop, watching how different people are doing different things. Like absolutely everything that I do nowadays is is MMA. There's there's nothing else for me. Man, that's that's pretty awesome. But how do you how do you manage the recovery, bro? Because that you know you can everyone can probably say I'm going to add an extra session in, but then it's not just one sided. You have to balance, right? So how do you do it? Yeah, man, that's a good question. It's it's the recovery is a big thing. Um, for one, train aid, right? Uh, they're a huge deal for the recovery. Um, another thing is being disciplined in the session and knowing that I have a goal to complete in the session. Not not just kind of like ego training and going like, hey, I need to win every single round. Um, knowing that I'm trying to get a certain thing out of each round, right? I'm trying to work on a certain uh, skill or set of skills and um, – and not getting carried away with kind of like, okay, I'm going to make sure I win every single round, you know, like um, there's a time and a place for that. Like in camp, like when you, you got to like, uh, you can't, you got to kind of work on having that dog inside of you. Um, but outside of camp, a hugely important thing that people like uh, forget is like the mental side of it. Like I want to be mentally making huge gains every training I walk into and, um, and and that's the case for sure. Like I took a little bit of a um a little bit of a layoff um after uh my fight against Quillen and and I made huge gains in my um in my game. Absolutely huge gains. Um and I needed I needed it to be that way. I needed to feel like um it, it didn't matter how I came in on the night, like like my my skill level is going to be too high that like it didn't matter who they put in front of me either that like I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna miss them. Man, it was about about a year ago or so we chatted and you talked about um you know taking on different skills and you know absorbing what's useful to you and disregarding the rest and all that sort of thing. Are you still like looking at up new stuff or kind of drifting into what you know and what you like or do you do you still look outside the box, bro? Ah uh, yeah, we're we're still looking outside the box. Like uh, this, the gym that we train at, Team Compton, um, we're we're always trying to nerd out. Like absolutely everyone in in that training room is uh is a nerd for the game. Like we're after training, chatting different ideas. Like hey, I saw this thing. What do you think of this? Like um, hey, like I I've been using this. Like what did you what did you think that felt like? Like um, we're always trading ideas uh and kind of like growing. Um, I think that's the main reason why like that sets us apart from other gyms um and and kind of solidifies that we're going to have an improvement rate um that won't won't falter you know like we, we we're constantly going on the up because um it doesn't matter if we even reach the level of like the best guys like we're still going to keep going past because we're innovating we're, we're thinking of different ways to do things so um yeah for sure yeah no that's awesome man and, and what you said about focusing on the session uh it's kind of probably what makes a difference between being a professional and a high level professional rather than yeah amateur or hobbyist you know because for myself i go in i just do the same it's almost groundhog day when we spar etc we're doing the same shit over and over whereas you're you're trying to achieve a goal 
focus on that and you know keep that keep getting that benefit so you can keep stepping up yeah it's good it's good to hear yeah yeah for sure Bro, the, the last fight, James O'Brien, like I said, you're on a bit of a tear at the moment, bro. You had a nice fight there. Um, round one guillotine. Can you talk about the fight at all? Like, how did it feel to you? Uh, did everything get executed like you wanted it to? Yeah, it went um, exactly like I wanted, uh, exactly like we planned. Um, literally, if you if you had have heard us talking um, in the in the fight week, about like how how I kind of thought it was going to go and how my coaches thought it was going to go. It was like picture perfect, exactly how we thought. Um, yeah, it was my previous fight that I had against um, against Jordan Thomas. I kind of felt I could have put him away a little bit earlier, but I was I was enjoying the moment. I was really um, yeah, I was just loving like being in there and like I I. I was happy for it to go three rounds because I was doing damage, like everything was going my way. Um, but then, yeah, like my coach, Steve Compton, he talked to me and he said like, man, like, like there's no point in fucking around in there. Like you're giving people more chances than you need to. Like uh, in the, in, in the training room, um, you know, like I'll, I'll go for a lot more submissions, but like on fight night, I was being a little bit too cautious. And, um, yeah. and, and Steve was really encouraging me to like, like hunt for those submissions a little bit more. Like even if it sets up more vicious ground and pound, cause they're worried about them or if it gets to finish really early, like it's what we want. Like it's a whole part of my game that I, I, I really did not show at all in my pro career before that moment. Um, uh mostly because like i find ground and pound very very entertaining so i like to fight the way that i find entertaining um but yeah like this mission was there uh, so so i took it for sure yeah man um it, like you you mentioned in your interview before that um you felt like you were a bit better than him in all areas and you kind of showed that the way you approached the fight like you just walked straight into him right i went fuck this i'm better than you <laughs> let's go and, and yep. it worked out to be true what you kind of said right yep yeah yeah 100 percent. i think um i think like you said uh about the the loss being a, a good thing i think it i think it wasn't just a good thing um just for my mentality but for like uh i think it helps me out because of what other opponents kind of think when they watch that tape. Like I, uh, I looked pretty terrible in that fight. Um, I, I had some stuff going on, takes nothing away from like, um, like the awesome win that, uh, Quillen had over me, but, um, like people look at it and they think that's me. Uh, it's so far from what, like what I, what I train, like what I can fight, like, um, so I think it works in my favor. I, I go into fights and I know for sure people are underestimating me. They're, they're seeing that poor performance and they're like, oh, okay, like I can make this happen to Dom, but they, they can't. Can, can you go into it at all what was going on, man, or, or you don't want to talk about it just, just out of interest? Um, I, no, it's, it's nothing like nothing super bad. I, the only reason I don't want to talk about it is because it sounds like sour grapes. It sounds like I'm, I'm making excuses. Um, I, I was pretty badly like sick. Uh, I, I got a stomach bug, um, the week of the fight and I was like pretty much knocking on death's door. Like I, uh, I remember on the Wednesday of the fight, like I was curled up on the front of the gym, um, like laying in the sun, I'd like walk to the side of the gym, throw up and then like go sit back in front of the gym and like somehow I wasn't dropping weight while, while doing this. I couldn't get a, a bite to eat in all the whole week. Um, yeah, I was just vomiting everywhere. It was pretty bad. Um, I, I decided to like, kind of like tough it out. I was like, fuck it. Like, uh, at the end of the day, I'm, uh, I'm a professional, like I signed a contract, like I'm going to go fight. Um, and I thought that I was kind of over the bug by the time I had gone to, uh, Perth. But then when, when I, when I rocked up in Perth, I did like my weight cut. Uh, I went to do my rehydration and I had like 500 mils of liquid. And I was like, man, I can't have any more. I'm going to spew up everywhere. Um, so I think I ended up, um, I ended up walking back into the cage at, I think it was 72, um, which is very, very light, a lot lighter than I'll usually walk back in at. Um, and I, I remember it, like it spooked me on the, uh, on the way to, um, on the way to the venue. I was, uh, I was, uh, driving to the venue in the, um, in the shuttle bus. And, um, I was sat next to a bantamweight and we were, we were, we were kind of like chatting about, um, we were like, uh, just chatting shit. Um, he was, 
he was saying like how'd your weight cut go i was like oh, not the best man i rehydrated and only got to like 72 um he was i was like how'd yours go he was like oh i'm 71 and i was like oh <laughs> fuck man this guy's two weight classes below me he's yeah. coming in one kilo underneath me i'm like fuck man like this is no good um yeah like i said like it takes nothing away from like from like how well uh quillen performed he like he absolutely killed me in that fight it was it was awesome like he out he outskilled me in many areas i feel like i didn't get to put my best foot forward but like i think that opportunity will, will present itself in the future anyway yeah man yeah you say that you the fight was really bad and he killed you in that in a few areas i wouldn't really say that man i think you really you really pressed him if you i haven't seen all of quillen's fights but i think if you he'd probably think that was one of his toughest because you were really grinding on him and that um what what sort of areas do you think that he actually you know uh, excelled in in that fight anyway even though you were under the weather yeah he um he had a lot better mat wrestling than i thought like his um yeah. his wrestling scrambles was a lot more than i had anticipated i um in that camp i had uh pretty much only worked top game and like almost no bottom game because i just assumed i was going to end up on top because watching his previous footage i didn't i didn't really rate his wrestling very highly um but it was clearly like an area that he had worked on a lot i think he had had a, a very similar moment to myself like my loss to him i think was very similar to his lot uh his previous loss that he had had and he had, he had come leaps and bounds obviously since then um because yeah his wrestling was a lot better than i anticipated um yeah and that was that was a big surprise. Like I, I I remember I landed a lot of takedowns, but I was too complacent. I was I was very much expecting him to just sit still, um, and kind of play a little bit more jujitsu game. Um, and then when he didn't, I, and I ended up on my back, I kind of got like caught by surprise, and I was um yeah I wasn't ready for it. Yeah, no, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I wrote that down as well. Like I look at the fight again last night, and uh, the yeah the wrestling scrambles and control was probably what got him got him the win to an extent um but in saying that you it was a bad uh like fight for you you had some areas of success and moments of success too like you were in top position a couple of times you were attacking some some submissions or some control positions like on palada armbar yeah there is a chance that if you're a little bit on the game a little bit more you could have you could have done the same thing as you just did um to, to James O'Brien, you know, you never know. It wasn't yeah. wasn't too bad, bro. And the grinding effort you put in, especially considering you're you're unwell, uh, was pretty full on. Like it was pretty high intensity for almost three rounds. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what um, that's what my coaches had said to kind of like um, like I suppose comfort me after it. They're like, man, like at the end of the day, like it was you were knocking on death's door and you put on a fight of the night performance against like someone who they're now considering to be like the, the top guy in the country. Right. So like, yeah. um, yeah, like, um, I, I think, I think, uh, yeah, it, it, it was in some ways bad because like people, people didn't like, I, I feel like I performed well enough that people didn't realize I was sick. Um, so then they thought that that was just like a poor performance in general. Um, but like, you know, it is what it is. Like, uh, I, I got to, I got to test myself a lot in that one. Like I got to show that like, fuck man, like, man, like 30 seconds into that, I both felt like throwing up and shitting my pants. Like I was absolutely <laughs> no done good. It, Should have um, done it. Yeah. 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 That is shocking. Yeah. <laughs> Plan B. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, no. Uh, and like it was something different I had to feel like I had to feel like fighting through that um which is I've never had to fight through something like that to that extent before um so that was definitely different and I think it strengthened my mentality because in any fight I go into after that like I feel like it feels like a breeze man like I feel like like I'm, I'm barely working yeah that's good man hey um I noticed you hit a couple of those judo throws are they from you me you mentioned in our last interview to year ago, Aaron Blackie was a bit of a judo player you're still practicing that much like doing some of the judo throws yeah 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 uh, I, I haven't um I haven't trained with Aaron in a, in a while he's uh he's, he's just opened up his own gym so he's pretty busy with that um but yeah like definitely that was a huge huge influence for sure I I yeah I've I played around with lots of different uh, areas of my wrestling game. I've got, I've went away from um, 
judo throws a little bit in the last few fights, I think. I think uh, it's it's harder to hit judo and MMA on someone who doesn't want to play grappling. You know, like if they're engaging back in the grapple, they're, they're trying to take you down as well. I'll reverse someone really well with a, with a throw. Um, but I think the more I'm kind of getting a bit of a name for myself as a bit of a wrestler in Australian MMA, I think the more people are like, they're, they're trying to disengage. They're like trying to, trying to get to safety. They're trying to bring it back to the striking. Um, and then it, it, it tends to be harder to hit those judo throws, I find, uh, but a lot easier to hit like uh, your more standard wrestling takedowns, you know, your body locks, your double legs, your single yeah. legs, um, all of that. Man, um, you just mentioned before about like you, you like ground and pound and that. Um, I've been talking to a few people lately about it. I noticed that in that, um, <clears throat> in the Quillen fight, uh, about you were more focused on just the, the submission game perhaps or um, not really focused on the ground and power amongst, amongst the exchanges. Is that something because you weren't feeling well? Where it, like when you compare it to the, to the James O'Brien fight, you were, you were throwing punches within the grapple. Like I, I think that's something that people really need to be conscious of is um, it makes a big difference when someone can throw the strikes in between the grapple because it just puts people off their game. Whereas if you turn it into a pure grappling match, they don't have to worry about that one thing. You know what I mean? Is that something you're working on, or is that, or was there something in that match that stopped you from striking during the grapple with Quillen because you weren't striking as much as you were in some of the other fights? Yeah, like like I said, like um, I was I was a little bit drained on that night, so like it was um, it's it's definitely more energy consuming to let let strikes go from there than to just kind of yep. like yep, yep. lay and pray. And that night I kind of resorted to a little bit of lay and pray, which I'm I'm never a big fan of. Like I don't find it entertaining when I watch it. I, I find like big damaging ground and pound entertaining. Um, and like I said before, I always like to fight uh, in line with what I find entertaining. Um, also, after coming off that loss, I kind of had a little bit more of a I don't know a bit of an angry mindset going into MMA fights, you know, like I really want to, I want to hurt the other guy. I want it to be, I want it to be obvious if you saw the other guy walking around after the fight, um, that they were in a fight, you know, I don't want it to be, oh, I just caught him early with something lucky. I want it to be like his face is fucked up and it's very noticeable that he's been in a fight. You know, I want, <laughs> I want, I want them to think about me for the next few days when that like stings, when they're in the shower, you know, like, hot water going into those cuts or whatever like i want them to remember me for that shit you know you're a bad man you're a bad man and you're uh you <laughs> potentially be a mark on them for life with the sport you guys are doing man you might they might remember you for life from that little cut of the eye or whatever you know yeah 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 100 percent. yeah yeah 100 percent. i want i want that to come off in conversation i want someone yeah. to ask about that cut and then them to be like oh yeah it's the street butter you know <laughs> awesome man um so you're smashing the training like you never had before <clears throat> what else is there to Don Mar fun? Like, what else do you do, bro? You got to do something outside the balance it, or you're just hundred percent gym dedicated. Is there anything else to you, bro? I I don't do anything else. I literally do nothing else. I yeah, nothing. I don't I don't have hobbies. Um, I don't know. It's it, it's never like like I'll I'll sometimes the 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 most I'll veer from like uh watching MMA is like watching kickboxing or watching jujitsu. It's like still like MMA related. You know what I mean? Like, um, sometimes I'll just watch the specialist in their, in their areas, but like, fuck man. Like I'm never like, even if I go home and I, and I watch a movie, I'm never really like invested in the movie. I'm like just trying to like switch my brain off from anything. Like if, if yeah. you ask me what happened in the movie after, I could not tell you. I'm just trying to switch my brain off so that like, when I reboot it, like I'm fresh and I'm ready to go for like more, more training and more learning. That's awesome, man. You think of the level of mastery that you've probably already achieved and then that you're going to achieve if you can maintain that, bro. You're like you got your guys like John Donaher and these guys, they're the same. They're the same. They don't do anything else. They, they train people, they train, they go home, they analyze tape and, and that's how you can achieve that level of mastery, bro. Even university students, bro, like I always bring this analogy back, like you want to get a doctorate in something, you still got time off, you're still doing other things and you do it in a whatever, four, four to probably six to eight years, you've, you've got a master or a doctorate or whatever and then 
you know, that's that that's not even close to what you guys have done in eight years, the time the amount of focus and time you've put into it. So you're probably already at like more than a doctorate level in MMA and now you continue what is it what do you become? You become like a super super scion or something of uh of this sort of sport and I hope that you that it evolves and brings into your into your results and then further down the track I hope you can feed that back into people. I know you coach a bit, but hopefully that'll be something in your game in the future, right? Yeah, without a doubt. I don't see myself ever leaving the MMA industry. I think uh, I think I'll be a coach um, after I finish my career and then till the day I die. Um, I yeah, I I absolutely love the example of like a like a John Danaher because I think that is like like that's as pretty much as close as you can get to like mastery, right? Like I I think I'm going to end up spending more time on MMA uh, when I'm finished my career and I don't have to worry about something like, like sleep or, or, or right nutrition, like for like recovery and stuff. Like when I can just like spend all the time I want um, and I don't have to treat myself like an athlete, um, I think I'm going to nerd out on MMA even more. Um, and I, I love teaching. I really do. Like, um, uh, that that would be a hobby of mine, but like I guess it, it's still MMA. Um, yeah, like I I absolutely love teaching. Yeah, it's something I find a, a lot of enjoyment from. Yeah, so I definitely do that till the day I die. Awesome man. Um, so you mentioned a couple of fights. Uh, you'd like to get a couple of fights against experienced guys just to build up your skill levels, which is a, the right way of thinking, man. Then you'd obviously like to go for the belt, potentially a rematch with Quillen if he's still at the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Look forward to that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I, I, I want, like I've been offered a few names, um, from like, from eternal, um, uh, a few of the names are like very much like the same type of like level or like, uh, ranking that you would put like, um, uh, Jimmy, the guy that I've just fought. Um, and I want a little, I want a little bit of a step up. I want, people to see like um i want people to see whatever name i get mashed up against and to majorly think that i'm the underdog and then i want to come out there and i want to finish them in the first round just like i did to jimmy and i want people to go okay shit like there's a lot more to this kid than i thought um if if we can't get one of those names because it's very very reasonable i can understand like some of them don't want to fight um someone with a low record and in many ways they only have uh something to lose there you know like because because they're um because if i'm the underdog you know they're kind of expected to win and if if they do lose and they're like they're i don't know they're giving away like a um maybe like a high ranking for for not a lot of reward um if, if, if I can't get mashed against one of those guys, then uh, I'll, I'll for sure take take whatever name is given to me. Um, but yeah, I really I really do want to push to one of one of those high names. I really want I, I want a veteran. I want someone that's like kind of like, um, yeah, I want to be the the underdog for sure. Yeah, just like you're saying with your training, you know, keep leveling up. That's what you want, right? You want a, a nice uh, strategic um, leveling up of, of opponents on the way to a, on the path to the title, right? Yeah. And beyond, and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Like I, I, I very much get motivated when people doubt me. Um, mm. That's one one of the reasons why that loss was a really good thing for me. Like, um, I remember. I, I it, it means nothing, but I remember looking on uh, Tapology before that uh, that Jordan Thomas fight, and um, there was nearly a hundred votes. Ninety nine percent of them said that I was going to lose, and that <laughs> absolutely motiv- uh, motivated the shit out of me. Uh, it made me absolutely stoked. I'm like, uh, the, the, the idea of proving people wrong is, is candy to me. I love it. All right, man. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interview your next opponent before they come out. I'm going to ask them how they're going to beat you, what they're going to do to you, et cetera, and then I'll, I'll send it to you. All right, bro? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, bro. Sounds right, good. Right. <laughs> Hell made about you. Yeah, man, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for the rising of the street Buddha, bro. It's good to see you with this increased motivation. Good to see you having some good results. Uh, you're on the pathway upwards. I'd like to see a knockout next time. We go points yep. decision, submission, either a KO yep. or a nice club again, bro. I want to see that next time. Uh, so looking yep. forward to it. Yeah, 100%. Fuck yeah. Cool. All right, man. Um, thanks for your time again and uh, and look forward to seeing your next fight. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro.